Okay, so hopping right into this next one. We're talking about different key characteristics of linear equations. So you need to know how to find slope, x-intercept, y-intercept. Um, on this first one, that's written in standard form. So if we want to find slope and y-intercept really easily, we can always put it in that y equals mx plus b. That's always a good place to kind of start. Um, so if I went ahead and I solved for y, I'd start by subtracting 4x, subtracting 4x. These are going to cancel, and I'm going to get 5y is equal to negative 4x plus 20. Divide by 5, divide by 5, and I'm going to get y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 4. All right? So just by doing that, you can tell me what the slope is. The slope is negative 4 fifths, and our b, which is our y-intercept, is going to be... Four. Now, you need to be careful because if it asks for the point, it's 0, 4. If it asks you what is the B value, the B value is just 4. So make sure you're really paying attention to what it's asking for because those are two different things. All right. Um, next thing is it wants to find the x-intercept. The x-intercept is where your y value is equal to 0. So if I come and use this equation or use your original equation, you'll get the same answer either way. If I plug in 0 is equal to negative 4 fifths x plus 4, I'm going to subtract 4, subtract 4, negative 4 is equal to negative 4 fifths x. In order to get rid of a fraction, I need to multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm going to multiply by negative 5 over 4, multiply by negative 5 over 4. It's going to cancel on this side, and I'm going to be left with x is equal to negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. All right, those fours, this is like having four over one. So that four over one and this five over four, the fours are going to cancel and I'm just going to be left with five. All right, if you plugged in zero for this equation for your y, you would still get the same answer. So it does not matter. So your x-intercept would be the point five comma zero. Okay. So that kind of shows you how to do this one. That next one's in point slope form. So this next one's automatically telling us what our slope is right off the bat. So our slope is that one third. All right, so my M value is gonna be one third. Same rules are gonna apply every single time. If you wanna find what the X intercept is, plug in zero for Y. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna plug in zero for Y. So zero plus eight is equal to one third x minus 3. This is going to give me 8 is equal to, if I want to distribute that 1 third, and now you don't have to, you could divide or distribute, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get 1 third x, 1 third times negative 3 is negative 1. So now I'm adding 1, oops, adding 1. I'm going to keep my work going right here next to it. So this is gonna cancel and I'm gonna have nine equals one third x. Again, to get rid of a fraction, you need to multiply by reciprocal. So I multiply by three over one on this side, multiply by three over one on this side. These cancel and I'm left with x is equal to 27 because three times one times nine or three over one times nine is equal to 27. So my x intercept is equal to 27 comma 0. And now if I wanted to find my y-intercept, let me divide my work a little bit. I'm plugging in 0 for x, so I'm going to have y plus 8 is equal to 1 third 0 plus 3. So I'm keeping y plus 8. If I, dis if I combine these, I'm getting 3. 0 plus 3 is 3 times a third is just going to give me 1. So then I subtract 8, subtract 8, and that's going to give me y is equal to negative 7. So my y-intercept is equal to 0, comma, negative 7. Okay, so again, that's more Algebra 1. That just should be review. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is determining whether an ordered pair is a solution to a linear and to a quadratic. So to do that, you're going to take your point, and you're going to plug it in for your x and y value. So this is x comma y. So I'm going to plug it in, and it's going to be 2 plus 3 is equal to 1 half 
10 plus 2. So just taking that value and plugging them in for my x and y's. So 2 plus 3 is going to give me 5, 1 half. 10 plus 2 is going to give me 12. So if I multiply 1 half times 12, I'm going to get 5 is equal to 6. That is not a true statement. 5 does not equal 6. That's not true. So is this a solution? No. Not a solution, okay? Because I don't get a true statement at the end. That compared to if I did it here, again, this is my x, this is my y. So I'm going to say 20 is equal to 1 plus 4 squared minus 5. So 20 is equal to 5 squared minus 5. 20 is equal to 25 minus 5, which is giving us 20 equals 20. That is true. 20 does equal 20. All right. So yes, this is a solution. So true statement, a solution, not a true statement, not a solution. All right. Next one, we're going to get into real world situations. So um, on that first one, linear, you should be writing what the equation would be. And then on that next one, we're finding certain attributes given that equation. All right. So I'll see you guys back in that next video. All right. Bye.